All right, let's bring in uh, Hans von Spakovsky. He is uh, the Heritage Foundation's Manager, Election Law Reform Initiative. Wow. He comes to us from Washington. Did I miss anything here? Did I report everything accurately? That's very important, and I want to know if I screwed up at all. No, no, Bill, you got exactly right. I might add that not only is Georgia seeing record turnout, but just a couple of weeks ago, uh, Stacey Abrams' lawsuit that she filed several years ago claiming that the uh, prior governor's race had been stolen and claiming that all these reform changes were discriminatory and violated the Voting Rights Act, it was the entire case was thrown out by a federal judge, a judge, by the way, appointed by Barack Obama. So, Ms. Abrams has no credibility. She is an election no. denier. No doubt about it. You fired a federal lawsuit about it. Now, many conservatives believe that mail-in ballots in particular are crooked, that many more Democrat votes come in through the mail than Republican votes. Is that true? Well, again, it depends on the state. Uh, remember, in 2020, there was a big push by Republicans to get people to vote in person rather than through the mail. And again, like I said, it depends on the state. If you're a state like Georgia that requires an ID for absentee balloting, you're in much better shape than a state like California, which has no ID requirement of any kind, and therefore you don't have that security check on absentee ballots. What about the uh, difference in counting the vote? Again, a lot of people very suspicious. Some states will have their revolts, results certified at the end of Election Day. Others will go two, three days, maybe more after that, correct? Yeah, and that, again, depends on how good election officials are in those states in administering the voting process. The key... The key to good security there is to have poll watchers and poll observers watching every aspect, for example, of absentee ballots being opened, processed, and then counted. It's when those observers are not allowed to see that. Remember, we saw that in 2020 in places like Philadelphia and Detroit. That's what lends to people being suspicious about the outcome. And that's, it's really important that that kind of transparency be maintained in this election. But it won't be in some places. Everybody knows that. What's the what are some of the worst states as far as vote count deadlines? Uh, Pennsylvania probably is one of the worst. Remember, they've had long delays there in uh, coming up with election results. And look, they're, they're still litigating uh, within the past week or so. Uh, a case ended up before the Pennsylvania State Supreme Court because the Secretary of State said she wasn't going to abide by a state law that says that voters have to put the date on their absentee ballot along with their signature. She was telling local registrars, you go ahead and count that vote anyway. And that's against the Commonwealth's law? Yes, it is. And fortunately, the state Supreme Court came out and said, look, Secretary of State, you can't do that. You have to abide by state law. And the Secretary of State, of course, is a Democrat, right? She is, yes. All right. Now, so we can expect with uh, Fetterman Oz that we might not know by the end of tomorrow who wins. That's exactly right. Uh, and, and we may have quite a delay. Keep in mind, too, remember, Pennsylvania has divided government. The Republicans control the state legislature. The governor is a Democrat. The Republican legislature several times passed election reform packages that would have solved a lot of these problems every time it was vetoed by the Democratic governor. So in your expertise, and I think you're the best in the country at what you do, is this because the Democratic Party wants people to vote who are not qualified to vote? Well, I think that's certainly true with some, some of their political consultants and others. I mean, look at the way they've been pushing in city after city to allow aliens, people who are not U.S. citizens, to vote. That's always the left side of the political aisle pushing that. Now, in California, migrants, uh, undocumented, can vote. They can cast a ballot because there's no ID requirement, correct? That's right. Plus, they have 
what they call automatic voter registration. If you go to get a driver's license, you're automatically registered to vote without them even asking you about it. And of course, uh, California is one of the states that provides driver's licenses to illegal aliens. So not many people know this, but if you are not an American citizen and somehow get to California, get a driver's license, you can vote. Well, you're you're not supposed to, but you're not supposed to, but you're you not can, supposed to. You but, can but, and nobody's going to stop you. Or if they find out later, nobody's going to do anything about it. Unfortunately, that is true in California and in a couple of other places, too. Where? Well, New York's the same way. Uh, New York, they automatically going to register you to vote. They issue driver's license to people who aren't U.S. citizens. And uh, Michigan, i uh, sorry, Massachusetts is a similar state. In fact, listen, in Massachusetts, there's a referendum on the ballot tomorrow to lift, repeal a state law that says that no one at the Department of Motor Vehicles can ask any questions about the immigration status of someone getting a driver's license. Well, since they have automatic voter registration, that means aliens are going to get automatically registered sure. to vote. It's de facto legalization. Uh, yes, there's no doubt is. about it. And that's what the Democratic Party wants. But I don't think most Americans understand any of this, Hans. I re I re they, don't, they don't know that California or Massachusetts or New York if you get here and you get here illegally, that you can vote. They don't know that. Right. No, I, I, and that is a real problem. Plus, keep in mind, and this is uh, certainly important to the, all the congressional districts uh, with elections tomorrow. Remember, when they reapportioned the country, right, determined how many members of the U.S. House every state has, that's based on total population. So states like California, which has a huge illegal alien population, they probably have four, four to six more congressional seats than they ought to have. Yeah, based upon the undocumented people living there. Right. Final right. question. Do you believe that this midterm election will by and large be honest and an accurate portrayal of what the American people want? Yeah, I think I think it probably will be in the vast majority of states. I, I have concerns about some of the states, um, like I said, New York, California, and others, where uh, they have almost no good rules and uh, regulations in place to protect the honesty of the election. But pretty much, I, I think everywhere else, particularly places like Georgia, where we have a neck and neck Senate race, they've done a lot to improve the security of their elections. Okay, thank you, Hans, appreciate it very much. That was a really good segment, I thought. A lot of good information in that segment.